Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. As you saw in the last video, I was setting up a bioactive enclosure for my Kilobrachis species Electric Blue. Well, I went ahead after I said I wasn't going to put a plant in it. We put a plant in it and we kind of made it a, you know, a more of a bioactive enclosure. So what you're going to see here is the rehousing of that species. I was really excited to do, to do this one because I've had a lot of people asking about their care. So obviously this will be the old rehousing slash husbandry video, but also because I wanted an opportunity to show that Kilobrachis Brocky species aren't the defensive monsters that some people seem to think they are. Mine have been total sweethearts. I've never had an issue with them, and that's going to continue with this video. So if you're looking for one of those train wrecks where the spider is throwing up threat postures and running all around the enclosure, that's not going to happen here. Sorry. So anyway, enough of me talking. Let's get into the actual video. All right, we're about to rehouse my Kilobrachis species electric blue. One of them, this one's in desperate need of a rehousing. It molted recently, and as you'll see in a minute, it's quite large. Hopefully, we're going to be able to prod it out. But this will also be a husbandry video because, again, we like to take the opportunity of when we catch these guys out and about during rehousing to actually talk about the husbandry. So just quickly, because I actually covered a lot of this in another video, usually I start these guys off, and this is just what I pulled out of my garage. This is obviously too dry, but I, you can start them off in the dram vials when they're smaller. What they will do is you want to give them enough substrate to burrow in, and you want to keep the substrate moist. So what I have here is the pipette or pipette. And what I do is when I add it, and this is actually a pretty good, you know, if there was a web in here, sometimes they web along the top. I take the pipette, I try to locate where the burrow is, and I moisten down the substrate on the opposite side of the burrow so you don't flood the burrow. That's the trick with it is to figure out where the burrow is, where the spider is, go the opposite side and carefully add it. I found that's the best way to keep these rehydrated. You can also pour some water in carefully, but you have more of an opportunity or more of a chance of it running down and filling up that cavern, that burrow underneath, which obviously freaks them out a bit. So I start started mine in these. They were great eaters. Fed them twice a week. They were eating small red runners or small crickets. Uh, I was pre-killing them at first, but after a while I didn't have to pre-kill them. They'd come right out of the burrows and grab them. And again, you don't have to feed yours twice a week. I do it because for the moisture-dependent species, I want ample opportunity to be able to check on them when they are to make sure that they're hydrated and that there aren't any issues. And that's kind of a way of making sure it gets done. Then, when mine put on some size, I put them into these here. Now, unfortunately, I can't find these anymore. Somebody feel free to chime in with a link if you can find them. I love them for the, you know, larger fossorial slings or some even some of the juvenile ones. They work really well, and you can see there's a little leg right up in there. What I'm going to try to do is use a brush to go underneath and stir this one out. Except I can't find my brush, so I'm going to go around here. Now, these guys are about, I would say probably about a quart, a quart and a half in size or so, which makes them a nice size for the smaller ones. They allow a lot of depth of substrate. Just make sure you remember when you're creating a home for a fossorial species, you don't want to fill the dirt up all the way to the top because what's going to happen is they're going to pull that dirt up as they do their burrowing and it'll stack up high, cover up the vents. Now, this one only has vent holes on two sides. This is an older enclosure. Nowadays, I generally put them all around because again, especially with ones where you're gonna be pouring moisture in, you wanna make sure that there's good airflow in there so they don't get stagnant. So let's see, let's pull this out of the way, not with my fingers. Oh boy, I forget my tongs. I'm just gonna cut this part out. Walk around, there we go. How do I forget the tongs? Seriously, how do I forget the tongs? All right, now what we're going to do is get the water dish out. Boop. And then I'm going to try, let's see how this works, to prod this one out and into here. And it's not going to work at all. It is going to work. All right. And with Lily barking in the background, because again, it can't be a Tom Moran video. <laughs> Wow, two of them barking, so we're going to go ahead and cut here for a second. All right, so that actually went pretty well. We had to take a break there because the dogs were outside barking, which I was afraid was going to happen. But anyway, here it is, my little, I mean, this is kind of probably about three inches or so. I'll go ahead and try to tilt this up. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see the, the blue legs. They look kind of brownish until they hit light. 
And this one, I got a funny feeling, is probably going to be in pre-molt or going to be in pre-molt soon, or very soon. So we're going to get this out of the way. Slide up the new enclosure. Now this here is one I just explained in the I did a video on fossorials. And this is the cage I set up. People that watch that video will notice some differences. A, I did turn it into a bioactive. I know I said I wasn't gonna put live plants in, but while I was pruning some of the plants in some of the other enclosures, there was this big vine of pothos that had basically formed little roots into the ground along the ground. It was kind of crawling along the ground. So I cut it and instead of just planting it, I figured it'd be cool to put it in here. So not ideal. Normally you want to let them sit for a little while, but these things tend to be very, very strong. So we'll see and hardy. So we'll see how it goes. Water dish. And obviously you want to make sure when doing fossorial species that you give them that starter burrow and hide. I know a lot of things you read will say that they'll make their own burrows and they will, except for the fact that sometimes it takes them longer if you don't give them a place to hide in. So when I put this one in, we're going to put it in a place where hopefully we'll be able to get a good look at it. But what's going to end up happening is it will go in here, likely web up around the opening and start pulling dirt out and making its burrow. And you'll see here, there's about six, six and a half inches of dirt in it. I've left some space up top because after it burrows it's going to bring that dirt up in here and again this is moist this is the bio dude substrate which i love we've got a moist layer at the bottom and again at the end of this video i will put a link to the setup of this enclosure to show how i did it all right so what we're going to do here is open this up and i'm going to try to get it going out this way and hopefully we'll see some of those blues She is not budging. Any of the blue showing up? Oh my gosh, like she literally is not budging. Oh, I feel terrible. She's all squished up, but there she is, Kilobrachis species, electric blue, all scrunched up. Unfortunately, you're not able to see the blue on the legs. You can see a little you bit. Can. Okay. Right in there. And it's usually those yep. front legs that really show it off. But gorgeous spiders. And again, we were talking about, I just did a podcast on how to keep tarantulas from becoming quote unquote aggressive. That, that term drives me absolutely nuts because generally what you're going to get is defensiveness. And aggressive, I consider, is something that's going to come out at you without provocation, not something that's going to feel threatened because you have opened up its house or its home and scared it. And as you can see, this one here is sadly just kind of all scrunched up trying to hide. So really sweet girl. And I have a lot of people on my Kilo Brockies videos come on and say how much of terrors they are. And I got to be more careful because they'll bite. But this is generally what I get when I rehouse them. She's scared right now. She knows she's not going to be able to run up and take out two big humans. I mean, obviously, they don't think that way. But... Right now, she's just trying to blend in with the surroundings, hunker down, and hope that we don't harm her. So we're not going to keep her out too, too long here. But again, with the enclosure, always want to make sure you give them the hide so they'll start off. Water dish, moist substrate. We'll see how the plant goes. I'm hoping the pothos continues to kind of grow around here, which would make for a really beautiful enclosure. This should obviously, this is going to be a very big enclosure for her. I honestly thought she was a little bit bigger, but she'll grow into this one in a few molts and should be fine. And then what we'll do is allow her to settle in a little bit and then we'll try feeding her. So adults, this is a 5.5 gallon. I will put the actual make of it. I want to say it's Zilla Critter Cage or something like that. And again, I did address this in the other video, but it originally had wire mesh here, wire mesh terrestrials especially can not only chew through but they can get their toe claws caught in them so what i did was cut out the wire mesh around the gasket and there was actually a nice little indent so i cut a piece of plexi that would fit in there perfectly used silicone aquarium grade silicone put bead in squish it down put two pieces of tape just to hold it in place while it dried and it's in there nice and solid and obviously drilled all the holes in it which is about as much fun as it sounds but hopefully this will provide adequate ventilation. Again, I normally like some cross ventilation. Someday I will get into actually drilling the glass in some of these and adding some vents. But what we're going to have here is hopefully the plant will help with the quality of air in it because obviously we're producing oxygen. And hopefully she'll settle in nice and we'll be able to see her out and about. I have found with the 
bioactive enclosures that when they have the plants, they tend to venture out more. You tend to catch them out and about more. So hopefully that'll be the case with her once this fills up with some foliage. So there we go, Kilobrachis Kilo species, electric blue. Somebody's gonna ask what kind of substrate you can use. Honestly, anything, peat, cocoa fiber. The problem with cocoa fiber is it tends to settle when it dries out and it tends to evaporate very quickly. It's why I got away from it. Topsoil works great when worked with, with mixed with vermiculite. Peat works great when mixed with vermiculite. This here is the BioDude substrate. It took two six quart bags just to give you an idea of how much substrate this thing is holding. And then as far as temperatures, the low 70s in the wintertime here, high 70s to 80s in the summertime. I've never had any issues with that and they seem to be growing quite well. Great eaters at this size, this one will eat a full red runner roach, a large red runner roach or cricket, sometimes they even drop two in. No problem, once a week, once every other week is a great feeding schedule. So there we go, Kilobrachis species, electric blue. I, I'm just gonna give her a little, nah, she's not gonna move, so I'm not gonna bother her. Unfortunately, we won't get the sear all stretched out and see all that blue, but I do have a little video that I will put over top of this where she's out on the top of her old enclosure and you can see that blue beautifully. But we're gonna let this girl settle in and we're gonna give the cameras a break and that'll be it for this one. All right, so as you can see there, the spider was not defensive at all. I've gotten that response from a lot of my fossorial species when I go ahead and rehouse them. Many of them will just kind of hunker down, get into that stress pose, and try to make themselves as small as possible. Almost like a little kid that's basically covering their eyes going, you can't see me. They kind of get that idea where they don't want to be spotted. They're trying to keep away from you. And then if you cup them, get them into their new enclosure, they're usually pretty fine. Now, does that mean that you're not going to have a situation where one might become defensive? Of course it can happen. You can have one bolt suddenly, in which case it's usually best to put the cover back on the enclosure, step away and let it calm down. There's no need to fuss with a defensive spider. That's just going to cause more stress for the spider, more stress for you, and open up the potential for escape and a possible bite. So something to keep in mind, people have asked me, what do you do if one goes a little crazy during the rehousing? Cover goes on, I put it in a, you know, a dark area, and I walk away and let it settle down. But as you can see here, this one did fine. It did go ahead and web over the front of its burrow. I do think this one's probably, was probably in pre -mold. It was looking a little bit dark and pretty chubby. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully next time I see it, I'll see those two blue, beautiful legs hanging out the front of the tunnel because they really are the coloration unfortunately i wasn't able to do it justice in this video but the coloration is just amazing there's a reason why these guys are so highly sought after so that will do it for this video as always if you liked it enough that you want to subscribe very much appreciate you can click the circle somewhere around here if you want to check out some more videos ahead of time to see if i'm worth subscribing to i'm going to put a couple here including probably the one about how to set up fossorial species because that's kind of the prequel to this one as always love getting comments i answer every single one of them although it may take me a couple days sometimes i'm back to school now and time's limited so please comment i'll answer Thanks so much for anybody that gives a thumbs up. I appreciate that, and we'll catch you guys all next time.